Greetings in Jesus' name, my dear brothers and sisters. I have a word from the Lord for you this week, and this is in continuation with a series on prayer. The Lord has certainly been very good to us, and He's given us a word that we can share, and that would bless your heart. Today, the word that the Lord has put in my heart is very specific. It calls for action. Stay with me to understand what Samuel did as an act to honor the Lord and how he prayed. What was the answer? You're going to be blessed. My dear friends, the word the Lord has given me is very wonderful today, and I'm so excited to be sharing that with you. So, in the book of Samuel, as we know, Samuel by himself, if you look at his name, Samuel, he was somebody who was prayed for. All of us know that Hannah cried and prayed in the temple at Shiloh, and Samuel was born. My dear friends, he was, as a person, he was much prayed for. In this series of prayer, I'd like to tell you and remind you that most of us are answered prayers. Our parents prayed for us. Our parents, friends prayed for us. Our families prayed for us. Ministers of God have prayed for us. You probably would not have seen or we didn't uh, you know, see the people because they are not here anymore, or we ne we got we got no opportunity to see them any day of our lives because they were somewhere so far and they had just prayed. My dear friends, I like to tell you: if you are an answered prayer, the first thing to remind yourself is that you are a living prayer because someone prayed and you came to be. Someone prayed while you were in your mother's womb, or somebody prayed that you would be formed in your mother's womb. You are an answered prayer. How exciting it is to be talking about this in a series of prayer, that you and I are answered prayers. Samuel by himself was an answered prayer. That means it is an established covenant of the Lord with Hannah in the midst of priests like Eli in the midst of people in the temple that knew that Hannah was crying and praying in grief, in sorrow, she was interceding in groans, the people thought she would have been drunk in an, on an early morning. Friends, hope you got me. The message to you is to first of all think, if you were living, if you were mowing, if you have an existence in this world, God has put in somebody's heart that they could pray, you will be born. God has put that in somebody's heart that you could be born. And when they prayed, you came to be. Some prophet came and prayed, some pastor prayed, maybe your own grandmother prayed, maybe friends prayed, you are an answered prayer. This is an establishing of a covenant between Hannah and God. She made a covenant at the temple. And what did she do as a result? She came and left Samuel at the temple to serve the Lord, even as a small boy. When he came on the first feast that they had to come of Thanksgiving, she came and she left Samuel with Eli at the temple. Now we must understand Samuel himself being a covenant bearer, an outcome of a covenant that God made with Hannah. What happens is something supernatural. When he prayed, something shifted because 
he himself was an outcome of a covenant. A covenant means something, something that is strong, something that is established. You know, an agreement is very different from a covenant. An agreement is two people just agreeing by word. A covenant is, it is a mark and a sign of something having happened. And when Hannah's covenant was established, she simply came and left her son at the temple. Now, you can very well answer me. How powerful would it be if Samuel, who was prayed for, and as a result of a covenant, prays. When he prayed, what happened? That's the crux of today's message. 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 5. I'd actually like to read it from verse 2 onwards so we get the crux of the message. And it came to pass, while the ark abode in Kiriath Zearim, that the time was long, for it was 20 years. And all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, If you do not return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then, then put away the strange gods and Ashtaroth from among you, and prepare your hearts unto the Lord, and serve Him only. And He will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. Then the children of Israel did put away Balaam and Ashtaroth and serve the Lord only. Now, it takes power to talk something powerful. Samuel, as a result of being an established person because of the covenant the Lord made with Hannah, when he speaks, he's a result of prayers. When he speaks, there's much power in it because he's born through prayers. He's born through prayers. And Samuel said, then the children of Israel put away all the gods. And in verse 5, this is exactly the crux of today's message. 1 Samuel 7, verse 5. Samuel said, Gather all Israel to Mizpah, and I will pray for you unto the Lord. I'd like to bring to your focus something very important. When a person is born into this world, the place that you are born matters a lot. The country that you live in matters a lot. Your territory matters a lot. Your family, your clan matters a lot. What could have been something, God can align it when He has a purpose so that you're just not a vagabond, you're just not lost in the crowd, but God sets you apart right from the time you were born. One such was Samuel. He could have been born any way. He was you know, his mother was one of the wives of Elkanah. They could have been born anyway. The other wife had a child much earlier than Hannah. But if you look at Samuel, he had to be prayed for in grief and in mourning and with a lot of hope. That was the result. You know what was the result of that prayer? Samuel. You know what was the outcome? The whole of Israel had counsel and word of knowledge, and they had a judge and a priest. Samuel was not just a priest. He was not just a prophet. He was a seer. He was not just a seer. He was a judge. All his sons were judges in Israel after the time of Samuel. They had multiple full ministry to perform, which was why the birthing wasn't easy. The waiting wasn't easy either. But the outcome was power because the person was power. The person that was prayed for was power. Now, this power package comes into a time and vicinity in Israel where people come and seek him for counsel. Now, he had a territory where he lived. So I'd like to tell you what was the territory that he lived in. It says... In the book, if, if you look at 1 Samuel chapter 1, in verse 3, 
And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penina his wife and to all her sons and her daughters portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. He used to give her a worthy portion. Now, along with a worthy portion, when her womb was still shut, she was already getting a worthy person in the world. But God gave her a double worthy, a divine worthy portion called Samuel. Now, this person had a territory in which, you know, he was at. So it says they came to Shiloh. You know, we're talking about this place in 1 Samuel chapter 7, where it talks about Mizpah. So he was in the territory of Gibeah, Ramah, and now there is a war between Israel and the Philistines, Israelites and the Philistines. So that's the crux of what I'm going to explain to you now. Verse 5 says, Samuel said, gather all people, all Israel to Mizpah, and I will pray for you unto the Lord. Gather all the Israelites to Mizpah. Is there power in a place? You know, if you chose a place where you're praying every day, I tell you, not only you become powerful, the place becomes an established place, an established place of connection. And that's exactly, you know, what Samuel was doing because he was already prayed for because he was in the temple. He was a temple child. He grew up in the temple. He was raised in the temple. He was his whole blood and his life and everything was in the temple. There was no other better person. There could be no other better person who would have that experience of bringing Israel to the heart of God like Samuel. He had all the giftings. He could hear God. He could see God. He could judge people because he, he called for the will of God in everything through prayer. And that is one such occasion here which says, gather all Israel to Mizpah. There is power in a place because, you know, when something happens in a place which is which is very historical, people remember that. Now, in India, we know all of the historical places. We know the Taj Mahal. You know, we know the, the places, the mountains, the Himalayas. We know Mount Everest. We know many iconic places that are very akin to India. And if you said, where is this? Then we would know that it is in India. Likewise, he said, gather all Israel to Mizpah and I will pray for you unto the Lord. Are you a person who can pray for others unto the Lord? And they gathered together to Mizpah and drew water and poured it out before the Lord and fasted on that day and said, there, we have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel in Mizpah. He judged and when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel were gathered together in Mizpah, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. And the children of Israel said unto Samuel, Cease not to cry unto the Lord our God for us, that he will save us out of the hand of the Philistines. Now what did Samuel do? He was requested to pray continually for the Israelites because they were terrified looking at the Philistines. Is there a leader whom people could count on to pray? Samuel was one who could be counted on to pray because he had wise counsel that came through prayer. And he drew people to the right place where he could pray for them. And then Samuel took a suckling. Look at this, because it came from the counsel of a king and a priest and a seer. He could give them, he could do exactly what would have pleased the Lord. It says, and Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it as a burnt offering, holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried out unto the Lord for Israel, and the Lord heard him. Samuel cried out, he prayed for Israel, and the Lord heard him. You know, when he offers, when there is a sacrifice, now he, these are a few things I'd like to talk to you about. You know what a sacrifice is? Anything that is laid down. Anything which is due of worth and honor, yet had to be laid down because 
you love someone unconditionally and you just want to give it off you. You want to let that go. He had to lay it down. It was a sacrifice. Is there anything in your life that you would like to lay down at the feet of God? Today would be the best day for you to decide. You've been holding, this is a very prophetic message for somebody that is listening. You've been holding something very precious and you don't want to lay it down. The Lord says today, lay it down so I can give you, not just for you, but for a whole nation and the people that are surrounded by you. And he said, and as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, I'm talking about the process that happened while he was offering. As he was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near the battleground against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder. What can a sacrifice do? What can a prayer of Samuel do? What can a prayer of a powerful person who was prayed for do for you? If you are a powerful person, you are powerful because you could pray. You're powerful because you know what prayer is all about. Unless you had prayed for or somebody had prayed for you, you wouldn't have been where you are today. You are an outcome of prayers. You are an answered prayer. Now, answered prayers praise for others. Now, this is how we inhabit heaven on earth. See, prayer, answered prayer, Samuel, he sacrifices. Sacrifice and prayers, intercession sought from people, everything to a living God. How incredible. Your heart matters a lot. Your heart of sacrifice, your attribute of prayer, the God whom you're seeking, and people crying out the need for prayer. Everything demands a situation. You know what it demands? It demands an answer. It definitely does. That demand is met by the Lord God Almighty. He calls it done deal equals answered prayer. He calls it done deal equals answered prayer. Today, it is done deal for somebody who is watching this. It's an answered prayer. You are a powerful person. You got to pray. You know how God worked through the sacrifice? It says, The Lord thundered with a great thunder, that's the first work, on the day upon the Philistines and discomfited them and they were smitten before Israel. Israel didn't do anything in the war. Samuel cried out to the Lord. God, who is the commander of the nature, who is in control of the nature, who has the whole galaxy and the constellation under his control, the sun and the moon, the heaven and the earth, all the people that he has made, whole of nature can stand still. The sun still stood still at Gibeah. God can do anything. You know, this time around, when Samuel cried out to the Lord for Israel against the Philistines, God answered by sending a thunder that terrified the Philistines. And in verse 11, 1 Samuel 7, 11 says, The men of Israel went out of Mizpah and they pursued the Philistines and smote them until they came under beth -car. Now look at that, Mizpah to beth -car. Verse 12 is very important. That's where I'm going to sum up my message. Then Samuel took a stone and he set it between Mizpah and Shen. And call the name of it Eben Hazar. Ebenezer in Hebrew is called Eben Hazar. That means a stone of prayer. A living prayer. Samuel was a living prayer. So he set up an altar called a stone of help. Because they cried out for help and the Lord answered. You know, God is very famous for answering people's prayer. Today, I want to tell you, I want to introduce a God who is not just famous because he's God. He's famous because of all the attributes of God. One major thing that stands out every time. There is no limit. It's timeless. It is answered prayer. Through generations, he has been answering prayer. There's no capping on that. He just, you know, topples off the cap. And he just overflows 
with answers to people's prayer. He's an overflowing God. He's a God of supply. He's a God of abundance. He's a God who is a very present help in times of trouble. He is the one who comes to our aid when we cry out to him. And it says, Eben Hajar at that place, he set up a stone. I tell you, people were living in tents in Moses' days. The Lord told him to build a tent. And then from Noah's days, he started with the altar. The first one to do an altar was Noah. He praised the Lord. An altar is a place called a mountain or an exalted place. You know where you feel? That is a place where you have received an answer. You know, an answered prayer is not just a prayer answered and it's just one of the ticks, you know, in your, in your whole list, like which sounds like a grocery list. No, it is a remark, a remarkable trait. It is a divine proof that a person has prayed to God. God has answered. He has come through for them. He has broken through obstacles and he has established their prayers. Such a place will have naturally inhabited the presence of God. Therefore, it's very fitting and it's deemed fit to construct an altar in that place. Today, why do we build churches? Because there should be an exclusive place where God and man exchange nothing but prayers. If you were in a building praying, you're one of those people in that building and through you, praise comes into the building because of the connection you have with God and through many others, if all of them are believers. But when a building is exclusively a house of prayer or a temple or a tent that is for God in the name of God, whenever you call in the name of God, if you call out in God's name, you ask anything in His name, in His place, with His power, with His presence, He will come to that place and He will establish what you asked in His name. That is called altar. It's an elevated place. It shows that God and the person had had a relationship. That's exactly what I'd like to tell you. Altar is not just an answered prayer. An answered prayer comes out of a relationship that somebody had with God. Eben Hazar is a place of relationship. And that relationship was established by Samuel praying for the people, the Israelites. Samuel cried out to the Lord. The Lord answered in the thunder and shook the Philistines. And you know what happened? That place was called the stone of help. It still stands today. If God has answered your prayer, go back to that place, fulfill the covenant. You know, it's not just an Old Testament way. A covenant. God has made a covenant with the sun and the moon. This is said in the Old Testament. Does God follow this in the New Testament or no? He does. The place where he said, as surely as the sun and the moon stands, so will my decrees and so will my covenant with you be. It is in the Old Testament, but he still follows that to all the people who live after the Old New Testament. There is nothing that we call old and just brush off. Behold, it's a new thing that the Lord wants to renew because it is a seasoned place. An altar is a seasoned place to receive aid against your enemies. Eben Hazar. And then the Philistines were subdued. They came no more into the coast of Israel. When you establish an altar, there is no crossing of limits in that place. After that, it is, it is established. It is sealed. It is covenanted. A marriage is a covenant. Once it is done, there's no boundary. That's the boundary. That's the boundary. There's no crossing of boundary. The Lord honors boundaries. The Lord honors what is within a boundary. The Lord honors the praise that comes through a dedicated place where he has already manifested in power. Now, our part here is to remember, like Samuel remembered and made an altar. What is the effect of an altar? Many people will come, remind themselves of what had happened this great day when the Philistines were defeated by the Israelites, not because of how powerful they were, 
But because Samuel cried out and prayed, he got the result, Eben Hazar, a stone of help. May the Lord bless you today with his word. Thank you, Father God. We bring all my brothers and sisters who are listening very intently to this message. As you stir up their hearts to raise an altar in their homes, at their workplace, in the community, in the nation, and in the world, we pray that every hand will be strengthened, there will be answered prayers. We pray, Lord, you who established the covenant between God and man will help us as we come out shouting, Eben Hazar, a stone of help. You are a proven one, God. We praise you forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.